Welcome, everybody. You're listening to the Contributing Leadership Podcast. I'm Scott Patton, your co-host. I'm very, very excited to have you join us. We've got two amazing people on the show with us today. The first one is a much sought after international speaker and trusted advisor. He has coached some of the world's most successful and affluent families for over 20 years. He has spoken at conferences, institutions, uh, the societies of trust and estate practitioners all over the world. He's had many TV appearances, including such shows as Money Talks and The Morning Show. Through his extensive work with families, Franco Lombardo has identified a universal connection between people's relationship to money, their money motto, and the impact this has on their business, family, and legacies. Our other uh, guest today is William Murray, Master of Stormont. He's a talented management consultant currently working in New York with Cathedral Consulting Group. Uh, he's been recently promoted to lead the family-run business division, and he's a fast-acquiring expert in technical business management skills, consulting business families across the U.S. So welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Thanks, Scott. Thank you um, very much, Scott. Willem, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, and uh, I have been blessed and grateful to see how our relationship has developed since we first met, uh, which sometimes feels like a long time ago, yet it wasn't. Um, so Willem and I met in uh, New York City about, I'd say probably a couple years ago now, maybe, maybe a year ago, and uh, there was a, a kindredness spirit that we both felt really connected because of what we do and our passion for business families. So William, you are part of a 16th generation family business based out of Scotland. Most families don't make it to second or third. What's the secret sauce that your family has? Uh, now, I'm not sure I want to give away our trade secret, Frank, eh? but uh, I feel like I can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm first sure to just reciprocate how uh, it's such a pleasure meeting you, and I too am so happy that we are growing together uh, and uh, you know building together. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting what we are, what we're doing. But in terms of the the Murrays of Schoon, and as you said, I am the uh, the 16th generation. I think there's a, you know, there are many many things that build into it, but uh, one of the key things is definitely leadership. I would say another key thing is effective communication, and that is an intergenerational thing, being able to effectively communicate yourself and for each generation to stand out as a leader in their own right and not be not you know, hide away in the shadows if you have a particularly dominant or successful father. Don't hide away in the shadows. Find your own niche and stand out. Um, I think that's another crucial one. Each generation has to be a leader. Um, one way to sort of to try and to try and bottle it, I would say, is maybe uh, wisdom and guts is one thing I, I like to talk about, or maybe grit and grace is another one that's quite famous. In terms of our family, what that means, the wisdom and guts. Wisdom comes from education and communication, and that's something that our family has always instilled. Um, and some of my ancestors were incredibly learned individuals, uh, and I think that really put them in good stead and has also filtered down through the generations. We understand there is always a need to be well-educated. Um, if you can communicate that learned you know, nature, that education, then you have wisdom. Guts is harder to, to teach or to train, um, but you can, you can imbue it in ways, and you can encourage it. And you can encourage it by giving, especially younger generations, the next generation, the, the heir apparent, confidence in what they are doing. If you give someone confidence, you give them a platform, and if they have a platform, they are more likely to do things with courage and have those all-important guts. So that's what I think is the, is the real crux of it. To, to survive through the generations, you have to have get up and go. You have to have guts. So one of the things that, that really struck me um, and really drew me to you and inspired me was when you shared your story of making the decision to become, to actually moving to Rome to be the aide de camp to uh, 
to Fra Matthew Festing, the prince and grandmaster of the Sovereign Order of Malta. What made you decide to do that, and what were the key learnings you achieved as a result of that experience? The, the reason why I decided to move to Rome was it was just an opportunity you can't turn down. It wasn't planned. Sometimes, you know, I like I always like to have a plan and an idea of where I'm going, but sometimes you, you can't plan for everything, and opportunities come up. And that's slightly why I talk about it, that whole, the whole gut issue, wisdom and guts. I thought it was a, a wise and bold decision that would put me in good stead for the future. And so I decided to jump at the opportunity, and it, it led to two and a half years um, of an incredibly privileged position and an incredible learning experience, as you said, right at the heart of what is a very special organization. Through that, I gained uh, incredible acumen, and I crossed completely across my life, total life acumen, in terms of I was living in a foreign country, I was visiting many countries beyond Italy and, and, uh, and Rome. I was shadowing a man who was leading a multinational charity with projects in 120 countries worldwide and full diplomatic status. You know, we were regularly entertaining and meeting ambassadors and heads of state. So the learning curve was, was quite a steep one, but a very important one. And in terms of building confidence, there's nothing, nothing better. What I think was also key about it in terms of my learning was there is that sort of Christian-centric underpinning to what the uh, Order of Malta does. And Fra Matthew, who is the Grand Master, he is voted, similarly to the Pope, he is voted into the position. So he's put into a position that's a great privilege and that you know, he's happy to be there. But he didn't necessarily set out to be in that position. And he has this incredible humility about him. He's incredibly humble. Despite having this hugely, you know, a grand eye title and representing an organization that's, that's been knocking around for over 900 years, he was an incredibly humble individual. That rubbed off on why I hope it rubbed off on me. I like to think it was already part of my character, but that was one of my major uh, learnings from being in Rome. Uh, despite being surrounded by grandeur and, you know, and great people, it is always important to maintain the humility and, and to be humble. That's that's so well put, William. And that, that just, you know, you know, you talk about humility and, and grace, and that's one of the big challenges that, that inheritors of wealth have or descendants of great wealth have, is how do they maintain that grace and humility while being born into a place of privilege that has enormous responsibility. How can these next generation individuals or family members become more contributors versus the tendency to become more entitled? It is, it is a very interesting process and it is a slippery slope to entitlement uh, and one that I fear many people slide down. How, how do you navigate away from entitlement and towards contribution uh, and, you know, solid leadership. It's definitely a long-term process, and that's something that you, know, you can't avoid. Um, there's no quick fix. Um, families have to try to imbue, and you, can say, you could say train, contribution principles and leadership principles, and especially stewardship principles into their next generation and their inheritors. And that can be done in many ways. It's, it's correct to kind of to try to plan around that, although many of the issues are the softer issues. People tend to think you can't plan softer issues, but you, you can. But it's, it has to be a long-term process of trying to imbue upon these individuals that they are incredibly privileged, incredibly lucky, and they should never be never be ashamed that they are inheriting you know, great privilege. Um, that's one thing that I struggled with for a bit, but now I've come to understand. I, I, I don't sort of deserve to feel ashamed. It's something that I, I couldn't control it. Um, I was just incredibly lucky for it to happen to me. So I should be very proud of you know, my history and my heritage, but that doesn't mean that you should let that consume you and let your, your privilege consume you and to begin down that road towards entitlement. And that is where the intergenerational exchange and communication is vital. And so 
the one thing I would say is, is again, communicate and communicate the right values to the next generation. And don't be afraid to do it from an early age. Obviously, you don't want to uh, you know, take someone's innocence from an early age. But if you can do it in the right way, do it from as early as possible. So when we met uh, back in New York, um, you were quick to share with me your passion for Schoon Palace. And, you know, in all honesty, I'd never heard about it. Um, I didn't know, what, didn't know what it was or what it represented. And uh, as you shared your passion for it, what came out of that? Schoon is obviously it's so special to me. It is hard to articulate. Um, it is our family home. It is where our family has been for 400 years. Um, and so for that reason, it is incredibly special to me and to all my family. Um, but what, are, what we're so lucky to have at Schoon is not just the family home and, you know, the kind of the, the center of our 400 years of heritage as a family. The importance and significance of Schoon to our family, and this adds to hopefully build our humility, uh, is that the history of Schoon, the site of Schoon, beyond the palace which my family built, goes on for many hundreds of years before my family were there. And although my family, you know, have done, have achieved great things, uh, significant feats, uh, you know, and have affected history in many ways, the history prior to our family being at Schoon is of much greater significance. And for that reason, our, our family uses that as a way to kind of to keep a lid on our achievement and hopefully not to begin down that route to entitlement. But it's a good way to remind us that although we have achieved much, other people have achieved more, suffered more and achieved more, and that kind of thing. Schoon, prior to our family, was, the, was an abbey and a monastery and was the crowning place of Scottish kings. And so uh, entertained the likes of Macbeth and Robert the Bruce, and they were crowned upon the, uh, the Moot Hill at Schoon, and our family very much benefits from the stewardship principles that those men had and that each uh, king of Scotland had. As that flowed down through the generations, we definitely have taken on that, that mantle in terms of stewardship. Uh, and uh, we talk about how the king was at the center of the realm and was the steward of the realm. And that is how we like to view ourselves today and our family businesses from that same site of Schoon. So as a result of our initial meeting, you know, you shared your passion for Schoon and I shared my passion for business families and developing leaders. And, and uh, what's come out of that is the Schoon Project, which uh, I'm very grateful and blessed to be a part of with yourself and Kirby Rossblock. Can you talk about what we're creating there and what's that going to look like? And more importantly, what you hope the impact the Schoon Project will have on future next generation leaders such as yourself. Yeah, I, I too am incredibly excited about what, we, uh, what we're doing together. The Schoon Project, or the, the Schoon Next Generation Leadership Program, it is, as I said, an extraordinarily exciting project. What we are aiming to do and to, to build is uh, a program for next generation uh, inheritors of wealth who uh, are trying to avoid that slope to entitlement. And they're trying you know, to follow you know, the right path towards being contributing leaders. And that, is, that, doesn't, uh, yeah, that can mean many things. That can mean contributing in terms of themselves, personally, through whatever it is, you know, volunteering, building businesses. Obviously, one of the major uh, motivators here is that they contribute to their family, to their family business and their family wealth, and that they become effective leaders for their families. And also, on a, on a greater stage, um, beyond the family in the wider world, what, uh, what can these next generation contributors and leaders do? And so I'm, I'm very confident that we're going to host a lot of very interesting individuals from around the world, all who are wearing the same kind of shoes, who are all in the same kind of boat, and who are all eager to be imbued with the same kind of stewardship principles. Uh, and again, we come back to that, that theme and to that, that discipline of being uh, a steward. 
And many people you know, hear the word steward and they think, hmm, I'm not sure about that. And we, we tend to think of it as sort of a docile, mundane kind of position. But my family looks at it in a completely different way. Stewards need to be visionaries. They, they need to think outside the box. They need to work, you know, day in, day out to achieve their aims. And these aims are not, you know, and these ambitions are not, you know, mundane. They are, you know, they are you know, extreme. Um, they are you know, trying to achieve great feats. And so this is what I am hoping the uh, Scoon Project does. It encourages next generation leaders to really grow in themselves and become these contributors and to take that back to their families and to help their families grow and contribute and hopefully transition to the next generation and continue to do so for many generations. So let's imagine, William, that you know, you are, you're 60 years old and you're looking back and the Schoon Project has you know, really taken off and has become the preeminent next generation leadership program in the world. And as a result of that, it's really put Schoon Palace on the map as the place where future stewards of the realm are crowned in their businesses and their families. What would that mean to you? It, it would mean an incredible amount. Uh, absolutely an incredible amount. So uh, hard to express amount. Because you know, I've, I, have, I have lots of friends who are in similar positions to me. And, you know, I have godfathers and godparents and great uncles and things like this, all of whom have had similar lives. And some of them have come through it very well and achieved great things. And others have been crushed by the privilege that they inherited for various reasons. Um, and it's, it's very hard to see. And it's, if I can help people avoid being crushed, and the way to avoid being crushed is to become an effective leader, to be confident in your own body and in the shoes that you're wearing in that boat, in your family business, and to build it and grow it, and to avoid being crushed, then I will be a, a very happy man. And if people see Schoon, um, my family, and the history and heritage of Schoon as the ultimate vehicle for teaching and in imbuing those vital disciplines and principles, then yeah, I will be a, a very, very happy man. Hmm. Very well said. William, you know, it's, it's been a, a, a honor and a privilege uh, having met you a year ago. I feel like we've known each other for a long time uh, and that we've traveled the road together. And um, I, I can express my gratitude to be a part of this project with you. And um, together with Kirby, we're going to, you know, help develop the next generation of leaders to, uh, to really empower them and their families to become great. And uh, it's, it's a real privilege to be doing this with you. So is there any last words that you have for any next generation leaders that may be hearing this podcast or parents of next generation leaders? Uh, what would be your last words that you could maybe impact on them? I would say that I'm, I'm excited to make a difference with them. I'm excited to, uh, first of all, meet them, uh, grow together, uh, experience each other's you know, history and heritage because I've, I've still got much to learn. Um, so I'm excited to learn from them. And together, along with yourself and Kirby, uh, our great facilitators, we're all going to make a difference. We're all going to contribute. And I find that extraordinarily exciting. And if we can have some fun whilst doing it in Scotland in the meantime, then great. So, William, the Schoon Project, this is the inaugural um, event that we're doing that we're hosting, that we're creating. Can you maybe share a little bit as to what the experience is going to be like and what participants can expect? Um, yeah, sure. So we're uh, expecting to have uh, 30 next-gen individuals and uh, expect for every uh, continent to be uh, represented, which is something that really excites me, having that uh, eclectic mix of cultures uh, and different understandings of what it means to be uh, a leader all in uh, one room, enjoying the same program. Um, that's going to be really interesting, uh, I think. We can all learn from that. Um, so there's going to be that element of it. As I said, 30 individuals from the next generation. Um, age from sort of 20 to 40. Uh, that's sort of the age uh, demographic we're looking at. 
Um, and in terms of the actual uh, program and content, we're going to have you know a, a series of different kind of elements to it. There'll be some you know um, keynote speeches. There'll be some more interactive and experiential uh, uh, parts of it. Some games, other things like that. Uh, of course, I will uh, give everyone a tour of uh, of my home and tell them a little bit about the history and the heritage of it. So if any of uh, our listeners are ready to, ready to become stewards of their realm, then they can uh, visit our website at uh, www.schoonproject.com and you can spell that uh, S-C-O-N-E-P-R-O-J-E-C-T.com and you can apply to the program through that. Awesome. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you. William, thank you very much. Franco, it was amazing information that you shared. I'm very excited about the Schoon Project and what uh, the changes that it can create in our world, which we certainly need. So thank you, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.